If you were a dog, what would you prefer? A chalky biscuit or some real meat? My guess is you'd probably say the chicken, right? Hi folks, I'm Darcy from the Purposeful Pantry and today I'm gonna to teach you two simple dog treats that you can make with using both chicken and sweet potatoes with a little extra special secret ingredients to make them really yummy for your pup. So recently my dad has moved in and he brought along his pup Shelby. Shelby is about seven years old. She's a mixed border collie. Uh, she is feisty uh, and very camera shy. Trying to get any kind of photos of her or any kind of uh, video role for her was pretty tough because she's just uh, she's very camera shy. Okay so what I have here is a cookie sheet full of chicken breast Partially, some of this is going to be done for Shelby, and partially, some of this is going to be done for meal prep tonight. I'm going to throw it in the freezer to flash freeze it for about maybe an hour. I don't want it solid frozen, but I want it frozen a little bit so that it's a little easier to slice. All right, after we've cleaned and sanitized the counter space, I'm going to prep one sweet potato for treats. Um, I'm going to do both versions. I'm going to do a cooked and an uncooked version because sometimes dogs might not like the uncooked version uh, and prefer the, the texture and stuff of the cooked version. So I'll do it both ways just to show you. Uh, I'm just going to punch a bunch of holes in there. And what you want to do is cook this, uh, whether you roast it in the oven or do it in the microwave, however you'd like, or whether you'd like to slice it up and blanch it. Um, we're going to cook this until it's just barely done. We don't want it like falling apart mashed potato kind of sweet potato. And then we're going to put it in the refrigerator um, for a few hours to allow it to kind of set up and harden. Okay, here we go. Here's our chicken. It's been in the freezer for probably an hour. I should have done it for longer. Started. I'm going to take a knife. I've sharpened my knife. Uh, you may have a better knife than I do and I don't have the best cutting skills. So don't judge this by how I cut. Judge it by the process of after. So these are pretty thick chicken breasts, so I'm gonna cut them in half first because I, what we want is a thin slice of chicken breast. Uh, we don't want big ones. Now, you can cut it on the bias. You can cut it with the grain. You can cut it against the grain. Do whatever works for you, it doesn't matter. Some say that doing it with a grain makes this a little chewier. Uh, some do it just different ways. It doesn't, it really, really doesn't matter. But what you really want are some thin strips because you don't want something really big. So we're gonna do some this way. See, if I had had this in the freezer a little bit longer, this would have been a little easier just to cut through, but even the hour that I had it in is enough. I probably should cut these just a little bit thinner. Okay. And if you feel like you need to, if you've got one too thick, you can walk in with something that's a little hard and just flatten it out some. We're going to make some smaller treats like this that are just little quick bite-sized pieces. And I just want to add this. I'm not a vet. I'm not a vet nutritionist. I don't take care of your dog. You need to do what works for your dog and what, your, what you and your vet have decided is the best course of treatment for your pup. Okay, that's good enough. Um, now, Something that you can do with this is you can treat this with a little turmeric and pepper to help for those dogs who may have uh, inflammation issues. Shelby does. She was hit by a UPS truck um, about a year ago. And uh, it's, you know, Shelby was a, a tire chaser and the, and the UPS guy didn't see her. And so, um, so she has some trouble with that leg even after healing and stuff. And so putting a little turmeric on here will help that. But if you add pepper to the turmeric as well, it's what makes it a full uh, usable um, aid for her. Using turmeric on its own is good, but to make it really fully absorbable by the, by the body, you need some pepper with it as well. I am sure there is a perfect ratio somewhere in the world, but we're not looking for this to be her nutrition. This is just an, a supplement, so I am not gonna fuss over getting it completely perfect. My little tea strainer is good for more than just tea. Although for tea, it's great. Take this and just shake it over here. 
keeps my fingers from getting too messy. I could also wear gloves, that would help. And before somebody worries about us letting Shelby out running on the streets, uh, she was actually at home with my dad at his house before he moved here and it was out in the pasture in their front yard. So it was when uh, Shelby was out in the front yard and the UPS guy came and uh, she was chasing the tires and he thought she was clear and she wasn't in. Uh, so it was nobody's fault. Now, should you use mesh over your, your stainless steel trays or your plastic trays or should you use fruit leather sheets or whatever? You can use whatever you want. Know that if you're using turmeric on anything that it's probably going to stain these, but I don't care. Stain sheets means that you have a happy full pantry. You can go ahead and put them on the metal racks. The thing that I find is that these things, because they have these little grooves in them, they tend to make things stick more, especially those things that kind of mold into them. So I'm going to go ahead and dedicate two of my large dehydrator sheets to doing this for her. Now the really cool thing about doing these for dogs is that you do not have to cook the chicken ahead of time. When you're doing jerky, chicken jerky for humans, the safest method is to cook the chicken first, then do the dehydrating. Uh, because humans can't handle uh, the bacteria that comes with uh, raw chicken. The way the dogs can, these might be just a little thick. Let's see if I can spread this out a little bit. A fork. So you do not have to do anything to these extra other than put them on your trays and dehydrate them. I do dehydrate at 160 just to be all on the safe side because I'm handling these as well. Um, so I want there to be no chance of uh, spread to me with um, chicken that's not fully, fully dried at a, at a proper temperature. So, uh, but they don't have to be cooked ahead of time the way that you would do human jerky. Human jerky? No, we're not doing Soylent Green here. We have found that Shelby's not a big fan of sweet potatoes, but I found a secret ingredient that she loves these now. Uh, she still prefers the chicken, but she'll eat these. Okay, so now we're gonna start working on our sweet potato. You can peel this or not, it's up to you. You might wanna try it both ways to see what your dog prefers because all dogs, just like humans, will have some preferences about what they eat. Now, something else that can be done to help your dog want to eat this more is you can either if you want to slice this and then blanch it some to help cook it down a little bit to make it a little softer, you can use any kind of broth. Use a sodium-free broth if possible because you don't want to add all that sodium to your dog's diet. Uh, this is vegetable broth, but you can also use beef or chicken, whatever you have. Uh, I have some sodium-free chicken bouillon that's just in a little packet like this, and we'll use this for what we're doing today. I keep these around if I need something for my dad specifically that we want to make sure we have no sodium in it. Uh, and anything else that you think that your dog might like, uh, you can try that. There are a couple ways that you can do this. I'm going to do some really, really thin pieces the best that I can. You can use a mandolin if you like, but I find that sometimes sweet potatoes uh, can be really fibrous and hard to get through a mandolin. So you can just do it like that. I want some good thin slices. So I'm using a knife to help out. Um, that was a little too thin. You don't want to make these super hard for your dog to manage because thicker slices can be that way. Also, if you want to do long slices, it helps if you have a sturdy um, base like that. So I just cut it off and make it flat and I can do some longer slices this way to make them more like a bigger chew. It's whatever works for you and the dog that you have and the size of dog that you have. Okay, this may have gone a little too much. 
we're gonna see what happens when I cut it. I put it in the freezer to help it firm up, and it may, I might be able to get out of this. Yeah, I think I cooked it a little too long. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try this. I think I could have redeemed this by having it in the freezer quite a bit longer. Um, but we are on a time crunch today with some things happening, so I wanted to make sure I got everything done in time so it could sit in the dehydrator. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some strips like this just to see if these are good bite-sized pieces for her. Now, again, play with your food. I can't encourage that enough when you're dehydrating to figure out what works best for you and your family, um, what they prefer. Nothing that you do is a waste, even if anybody didn't like it, because you know you can always powder something. Um, but it's good to do this so that you know what people like. And even if it doesn't work out, um, a mistake is a mistake that you learn from. It is not something, it's not waste because the more you learn to do it in your process, uh, the more you'll be able to do it better in the future. I have lots of mistakes that happen. This is going to be one of them where this was just not quite ready. I mean, it was just a little too overdone and I should have left it in the freezer a little bit longer. But we're okay with that. We'll make it work. Oh, I had a thought. You know what? I'm going to do something a little different. Okay, what I did was t I took one of those packets and just put a little bit of water in a bowl. So this is... Uh, a sodium-free chicken broth that is going to be much denser than you would normally use if you're cooking. It's going to be enough that I can do this, just dunk my sweet potatoes into instead of just trying to sprinkle on the top. That way it's not quite so concentrated, but it will still have chicken flavor that might attract Shelby more than the plain ones. Typically we dry jerky for human consumption. The safe temperature is 160 degrees, especially for chicken. Now you can do this a little less for your dog, but I'm gonna be handling this stuff as well. So I'm choosing to do this all at 160 and there we go. This will probably take between 10 to 12 hours. Um, we're gonna let it go probably about 15, just to make sure, here we go. Here we go. Here are our sweet potato treats that were cooked first and then dried. Our sweet potatoes that were just dried after being dipped in some chicken, some concentrated chicken broth. And then here are our chicken treats. Okay, how do you test? After you give them a little time to cool off, they should snap. They should be completely dry. There should be no bending. There should be nothing that makes it look like they might not be dry. These are not going to be like the chewy treats that you get at the dog store that has, or at the pet store, sorry, that has a lot of preservatives to keep it soft and all that kind of stuff. So what do we do to store these? I get my little stasher bags and I put quite a few into a stasher bag for the refrigerator that we do for about two weeks. They'll last that long easily. Um, and if we're going to give her a treat, we can pull it out and let it uh, warm up a little bit before we give it to her. Then the rest of these go into our 
stash bag for the freezer because chicken is not reliably shelf stable for more than a couple of weeks because it's not cured and you don't want cured meat for your dog. So what we do is we keep a set in the refrigerator and then we keep this set in the freezer that we can pull from and replenish our fridge section uh, and then have stuff out on the counter to let it warm up a little bit before we give her a treat. We just do that and it will last us all month long. Now this can last in your freezer for about six months. And as far as the sweet potatoes go, because they were dipped into a concentrated chicken solution, I also would not necessarily keep these on the shelf for long term because uh, that could make it not reliably shelf stable as well. So we're just gonna store all this in our refrigerator for, you know, it's we do this monthly. So uh, I don't know how long it might last in your refrigerator and under your circumstances. Now let's see what Shelby prefers. Shelby, come here. Shelby, sit. Shelby, come here. No. Shelby, sit. Good girl. You ready? You ready? Yeah. You like that, don't you? So if you want to see another treat you can make with your dehydrator, check out this video right here. And until I see you again next time, keep preserving.